Hey, this is a multi-part series and I have linked part number one in the video description down below. Oh, and if you want to follow along, you go to procurementzen.com slash digital where you can download the resources, chat with fellow students. And by the way, it's completely free. So let's start with video. Now that we know what those note colors mean, we're going to focus in this lesson on an even more important part of the NIME visual language, the traffic lights and the in and out ports. You might have seen the traffic lights already in the example workflow we did in module one. So we are going to discuss in this lesson the four different traffic lights and some of the in and out ports that are used in NIME. By the way, you can download the sample workflow we are using here in uh, this lesson uh, down from the resource section below this video. And if you want to know how to import a workflow, I have described it step by step also below this video. Basically what we're using is our example workflow from module number one. So the traffic lights. There are four different types of traffic lights and each of one indicates a status of the corresponding node. So these four traffic lights are red, which means I'm not yet configured. I don't know what to do. Something is missing. Yellow, which means I'm ready and configured. I could execute now. Green, which means I've executed. And by the way, on my out part, here are the results. If the node has an out port and finally, gray with a red arrow sign above it, which basically means something went wrong. By the way, if you want to know what went wrong, have a look at the NIME console. It usually gives you a very good indication of what it is missing or why it couldn't execute. So let's go through this by using some part of the very first automation workflow we built together back in module number one. So this workflow has executed already and has saved as such. It's important to remember that if you save your workflow, the status of each of the nodes gets saved as well. They do not automatically reset. So let's assume we kill the connection here between that joiner node and the upper group by node. You see it is marked. You can see this from this little dots. So let's just hit delete. And see what happens. You see now everything in the upper pass, if you want, has turned red because the group by node no longer receives any input data anymore, but it is dependent on that input data. And now it does not know what to do, it does not know how to execute. And very important, why are all the other nodes further down the road also red? Because they are dependent and working with the results that came out of this group by node. That is very important to understand that these nodes follow each other. So let's re-establish that connection. I just click on the out port of the joiner node and connect it to the left input, the upper group by node. You see, now all of a sudden it turns yellow again. Why not green? Well, because we have killed the connection before and now it needs to be executed again. Like any good traffic light, it follows the logic red, yellow, and then green. So to make all of these yellow nodes in this workflow green again, I'm going to show you a little trick. Press and hold shift on your keyboard and then press the F7 key. This is the keyboard for executing all executable nodes. One word of warning though, be careful with that keyboard shortcut because very soon your workflows will grow in size and number of nodes and you don't want to run into a situation where it takes forever to go through certain iterations. So make sure that you don't overuse that keyboard shortcut. But for this very small workflow, it worked very well. Voila, now all our nodes have executed again. 
So now let's have a look at the in and out parts of every note. Let's just focus or zoom in a little bit more on this group by note here. The most common ones, at least for the examples we are going to use throughout this course, are these little black arrows or triangles. These little black arrows or triangles indicate data table imports and outports. So a data table, basically this one here, the joint table, comes from the outport of the joiner node and goes into the import of the group by node, which you can see from the information you see here, because that is the information that comes out of the joiner node. An additional port we will cover throughout the remainder of this course later on in the advanced module is our flow variable ports. So let me just quickly show you how those one look. Basically every note comes with one, so there's a little secret trick, which is not so secret, to make it visible. See, here is in the context menu when right clicking you see show flow variable ports. Flow variables can always be connected from these Led, little red circles. Um, we will cover what flow variables are and how powerful they are later on in the advanced module. So let's hide them again. Right click, hide flow variable ports. Besides the two we have just covered, there are a lot more of in and out ports in NIME, oftentimes squares. For example, um, blue squares, green squares, you, can, you have them for database connections, you use them to export images and this kind of stuff, but that is a little bit beyond the scope of this very course, so um, we will not cover them in detail here, as we also will not create or approach any databases um, as part of this introductory course. And when you then travel even further and develop your own analytical models, which is very easy and very handy and very visual in NIME Analytics platform, you can even export those analytical models, otherwise potentially known as algorithms, through PMML export and import ports. That is a standardized model describing language, so to say. So now that we have covered the ins and outs of nodes and the visual language of NIME, in the next three short lessons I'm going to show you some tips and tricks before in the next chapter of this module we start building a big, very helpful and very interesting workflow together. So as always, if you have any comments or questions, just leave them in the comments below this video and I'll see you in the next lesson. If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with NIME. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.